Greetings, everybody. Nick here, and welcome to my podcast. So, you want to be a musician. Now, this is a very special episode. It's episode number two, and this is where we start talking to guests. <laughs> That's what podcasts are all about, right? It's not going to be just about me. Episode number one was myself as the first guest, and I did that because I wanted to set up what the podcast was going to be all about. Answer those questions that I'm going to be asking the guests with my own stories, my own wisdom, anecdotes, all of those kinds of things. But now we're going to get into talking to people, and I have a great guest for episode number two, Mr. Billy Sheehan. Billy Sheehan is a legend in rock and roll. He's been around for a long time, and that's a good thing. From his band Talus back in the day, Talus had their own record deals, opened up for Van Halen, which is so cool, early Van Halen, right? Uh, he started Mr. Big, huge band in the 90s, number one singles, platinum selling records. He's toured all over the world multiple, multiple times, thousands of gigs under his belt, at least, uh, all kinds of other bands and projects he's recorded for tons of people. The man knows what it's like to be a musician. He's super cool to talk to. He's got lots of stories and a lot of wisdom, some great opinions on things. Um, he's really cool to hang out with, and I must say, he's really fun to be in a band with. So I'm very lucky and honored to be on this tour with Billy and the band Mr. Big. Now, if you're watching on YouTube, I appreciate you watching. Subscribe to the channel. If you're just listening to this podcast on whatever streaming channel you listen to podcasts on, I really appreciate that as well. Make sure you follow the podcast and uh, come back in a couple of weeks for the next episode. And then a couple of weeks after that, for the next episode after that, I have tons of great guests and artists coming on this podcast. And we're going to talk about all kinds of very cool stuff. So without further ado, episode number two of So You Want to Be a Musician with Mr. Billy Sheehan. Greetings, everybody. Hanging out backstage in Wichita, Kansas at a I forgot the name of this place. I got to learn the Wichita lineman and put it in my solo. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Only a couple days left of this USA run, the first run, and uh, Billy's been gracious enough to say yes to talk to me and do my little podcast here. My pleasure. My I appreciate pleasure, it. Nick. Absolutely, bro. So the title of my podcast is So, dot, 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 You Want to Be a Musician. And uh, this is talking to players such as yourself about not the playing aspect of being a musician, but what's it, what is it like to do this for a living, to make this your life's work. Yeah. Because it's not always easy. Not always and, easy. And <laughs> uh, you go through all kinds of ups and downs and trials and <laughs> tribulations, and you've been doing this for a long time. So um, I start off everybody with the same question, and it's a deep question, okay. and it's kind of weird. I think it's, it's, it's a good way to start it off. Sure thing. So do you need to play music to be happy? Uh, I think so. Okay. I, my, my little motto, if you will, is yeah. I... Play alive to live, and I live to play alive. Yeah, you know, so those things are uh, uh, important to me, uh, and more than anything else. Now, recording is cool, you know, yeah. and you're in a studio, and it's all right. It's, yeah. it's, you know, it's what it is. Uh, but performing live on the road is the true test of everything. It's where everything all comes together and gets delivered live to the audience. I believe initially recordings were just made as kind of a little stopgap measure because a, 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 an act couldn't be in so many places at once. Right. So they'd make a record so they could send, send that around in lieu of performing their live because right. they can't be everywhere all at the same time. Right. Of course, it turned into a whole different thing after that, but that was the initial idea, I believe, back in the day when uh, bands were first putting out, or musicians were first putting out music. Right. So, uh, yeah, I need it. Uh, it's my... Uh, I, I communicate a lot with people online. I run all my own social media, and a lot of people write to me and say how important this is to them. And I try to emphasize. Some guys just say, "Oh, I don't play anymore," and I say, "Go back to it. Go back. It's the greatest therapy there is. You don't have to be a virtuoso or some hot musician. Just to play, play along with your favorite songs on records, things like that. It's it's uh it's a really a great therapy and fun and I still enjoy it. once in a while I'll put on an old record. We'll yeah. put on Sgt. Pepper's, play the whole thing through with the, you know, song to song, in sure. sequence. It's it's a riot. And I think uh, I'd I'd love to see better uh, music education now for young kids. I did a I did an interview yesterday with uh, this young lady named Ellen. She, she's about twelve or thirteen years old. Oh, okay. A little bass player. Yeah. She's the daughter of a friend of mine I played on his record. And uh, she's a great little player. And uh, she's just uh, caught up 
in music and playing. And it's a wonderful thing for you mentally. There's a great book I read called This Is Your Brain on Music. And I had a little inter interaction with the author, too, online, just to say how much I love the book and, and all that. But it really does make a big, huge difference sure. in people's lives. Uh, my, I'll give you a, this is a long answer, is it okay? No, that's great. Because <laughs> everybody answers this question differently, so I appreciate right you. Right Yeah, going for it. Well, um, I, I know in nursing homes, when people are kind of almost catatonic and they're kind of in the corner, not responding to anything, find music. Find out how old they are and what was a hit or some hits that were available or they could have heard when they were 15, 16, or 17 years old. Because the, those are the like ages, the prime years, yeah. according to that book, that you really start to lock into music. The music you hear at that time in your life will stay with you forever. And they come alive. And, and, they, and they know where they are and they, and they remember the song and they remember the artist. My mom when she was uh, about to pass away, we we're all with her. It was not a necessarily a, a, a down sad thing. She had a wonderful life and she lived to a, a ripe old age. But uh, we're all kind of sitting around and my sister said, put some Sinatra on. And I did from my laptop. My mom, oh yeah, she knew the orchestra leader's name and she came, came alive. Right. So there's a real uh, important mental and spiritual, if you will, connection to music with uh, people, human beings, and uh, I'm caught up in that, and it does yeah. it does give me great relief and great emotional outlet. Uh, there's some there, there's a lot of music that I can't listen to without tearing up. Sure, you know that it's just so important to me, and uh, so yeah, uh, I, I I need music. <laughs> well, you know. Speaking of that young girl, a 12-year-old that plays bass, that, that's kind of how we all started, right? Yeah. Young kids putting on our instrument, playing it, listening to music, and getting that, that dream of what it might be like to, to be on stage and exactly. doing you, what our heroes did. You sit down with a record and you go, well, what's, oh, oh, you try to find the note, oh, here it is, that's what key I'm in. Right. Where's the next note? Oh, there it is. And, and, so just a, uh, and it really mentally is a great exercise for you because it's basically like learning another language. Sure but it is learning a language different from the spoken language that really appeals to everyone, right. even, to, uh, even to the savage beast. You know? <laughs> <laughs> right. Music hath charms that, that calm the savage beast. Sure. I think that's the quote. So with that in mind as the starting point, you've been in a number of bands, you've kind of gone through a lots, lots of stuff. What were some of the pitfalls? What, what, let me step back. Was there ever a time that you ever thought I, screw this, I, want, I, I don't want anything to do with it anymore. Like, it, like there was something that was just so hard and was such a pain in the butt that you wanted to maybe give up. Did, you, did that ever cross your mind, ever? There were things that were so hard and such a pain in the butt that I should have probably said that, <laughs> but I didn't. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and, uh, and it's mostly things that have nothing to do with music. Right, it's the extra It's the extra, it's the extra, stuff. extra thing. Yeah. And that's why I see a lot of great players these days, and, and my wish for them is I hope they make it through all those things. Because right. I've seen great, great players that we never heard of again. Right. You know, God knows what, they, what happened, or some crazy manager, some stupid contract, or uh, you know, a, a divorce, or a family tragedy. You know, there's all kinds of things that can stop you. The life is tough. Life, life is not easy uh, for most people. Uh, it may seem easy because some people paint a picture that they're just doing fantastic and rolling in daisies. But in, in real life, behind the scenes, everybody's got a, a yeah. tough time. But uh, for me, music was always the thing that I, is my one thing I could depend on. Right. No matter how bad things were falling apart, no matter how much trouble I was in. And I've, I've seen some very, very tough times, but I just don't, Announce them. Right. Well, I don't post about those on. Sure. <laughs> I'll okay. post the good stuff. I'll leave the bad stuff be behind. But I've had some really, really difficult times. And, and it was the one stable, solid island I could stand on in the middle of a tempestuous sea was music <laughs> and playing it and listening to it. So it, that's awesome. How, what kind of advice? If you're sitting with, if I was a young musician about to take that leap, I'm in a band, we're getting signed, all that kind of stuff. Is there a little piece of advice, a wisdom that you would impart to a, a younger player about what things to look out for, that kind of stuff? Well, uh, drugs and alcohol, I've seen great, great players. I grew up in high school, we had a bunch of great, great musicians. The guys that were uh, uh, partaking in uh, 
various intoxicants. The drug thing, almost more than the alcohol thing, though they're, so, they're both yeah. can be equally uh, uh, troubling. Of course. Um, they, they, they were always great musicians, but they never got anywhere. Never made it. And I remember there's a famous commercial about uh, smoking dope where uh, they, uh, the, the headline is, if you smoke dope, nothing will happen. And then, they, and then you realize what they meant is, Nothing, Nothing will happen <laughs> because, uh, and now I, I know there's a lot of people that uh, it's a different time now, and people uh, indulge in that, and they're and they seem fine, it seems okay. And on just one man's opinion, by my observation, uh, it can really inhibit a lot of your drive and enthusiasm and your health, too. I'm, I'm going to be 71 next month. And I'm still on stage every night doing yeah. it, hitting it hard, you are. working up a sweat. Uh, my body's in good shape. Uh, some things hurt when I get up in the morning, but hey, that happens when you get over over sixty. But and I, I and I enjoy a, a, a drink. Right. You know, I don't do any drugs at all. I haven't even had an, an aspirin since 1971. I smoked dope a little bit in high school, but quit. And again, when I saw what was happening around sure. me, uh, I just said, I better, I better move off of it. Yeah. But I do enjoy a drink now and then, uh, some wine or, or a sip of whiskey. You, you and I have yeah. had a couple of nice dinners where we had a nice bottle. But, but to really to be careful and cautious with those things, because they really can be a, a kind of a hidden thing. Because you don't realize why so many things are going wrong and off and everything. You guys, I remember a, a very famous musician called me. He was in the studio having a rough time. And, I knew the guy that he was working with was just out of it all the time. Right. And I said, that's, that's what it is. You know, that's what, you, know, you can't really, it's difficult to work with. So to each his own. And if somebody wants to do their thing, I still love them and I still support them and I'll still buy their records and I'll still, they're still my friend. But I just think it's a good idea for everybody to stop for a minute and really make a decision on things of that nature. Sure. Because if you run the numbers, you'll see a lot more trouble from it than you do gain and benefit. I mean, you feel good when you do it, right. but there are, that, that pendulum swings both ways. I feel great, <laughs> I don't feel so great, or there's confusions. That, that's one thing for sure. And the other uh, advice I generally tell people, as you mentioned, people that are getting in a band, is to get in a band, get in a band and play. I, I, it's where everything comes together, Plus the extra stuff of you got to learn to get along with people. Yeah, that was going to be my next point in this whole conversation. Great, I'm glad. I, I, well, we'll, we'll I'll, I'll jump right to it if that's okay. Yeah. You got to get along with people personally, financially, business wise, and also musically. So there's, there's things you, you, you must be able to do. And to get in a band and work that out. Now, the first couple of bands you get in, <coughs> it may be very likely that you run into somebody that you just can't. Right. Deal with. So you move on and find somebody else until you eventually understand what you have to look for uh, in the people that you surround yourself with. Uh, a very, very important thing. So getting in a band is an important thing, not only musically, but then it also, uh, uh, musically though, it does help you to be an ensemble player. And being an ensemble player is what it's about in a band. I play bass. Uh, sometimes I do solo -y things, but when we're playing to be with you, I'm playing to be with you. Right. The single big fat whole notes, because that's what that song needs. Right. Or just take my heart, that, that's what that song needs. Uh, you know, you really have to understand w what you need to do as an ensemble player. There's vocals happening now, so everybody's got to pull back to let the vocals shine. Right. Uh, and you do the same on drums, of course. Uh, exquisitely of course. Paul does the same thing. And Eric understands that in, the, in our little Mr. Big family here. So uh, uh, being in a band with songs that you sing. Those are the three. Get in a band, get in a band with songs, get in a band with songs that you sing. And if you run the numbers, Chris Squire, just, I'll just talk bass players, okay. Chris Squire, in a band with songs that you sing. Getty Lee, in a band with songs that you sing. Right. Steve Harris, in a band with songs that you sing. Right. You go, go down the list of all the players. Paul McCartney, possibly the richest musician in the world. Right. I believe he may be. Right. I think Andrew Lloyd Webber is richer, but he's not necessarily a, a he's player. a musician, of right. course, but not a band right. guy. But I think Paul McCartney is the richest musician in the world. He's in a band <laughs> with songs that you sing. Right. So that was an essential element. So uh, yeah, I'd be careful with intoxicants and uh, then move on to uh, 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 getting along with people. And an, another important point, the audience is everything. Right. Everything I own, 
Everything I have comes from somebody buying a T-shirt, a ticket, or a, a a record. A record. Yeah, yeah. Everything. It all comes from that. Uh, and I grew up at a time when we had a, a, a stage that was only this high, and there was no dressing room. So we at a break, we'd step off the stage and sit down with the people that were there and hang out with them and look up at the clock. Oh, it's time for another set. I'll be right back. Go up and play. So we were, uh, they were our friends, and I got used to it being that way. Right. And it still is that way. I mean, on social media, that actually helps a lot. I can stay in touch with a lot of people. But the audience is everything. And to uh, when you do a show, you're doing it for them. They're paying their hard-earned cash to get in. They're, us they're using their evening. They're spending their evening coming to see you right. with all the uh, other extraneous expenses and hassles that that entails. Sure. Uh, so that's everything. Uh, so for young players to really realize, make that connection with your audience right away and keep it going and hang on to it. I have people still writing to me that came to see me in some of my very first gigs, you know, that are all around my age or even older. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's wonderful to have them. And a lot of sure. new people too, but the audience is, uh, the, the whole thing, we, we, we create a product. Right. And our product is a show right. with songs and music. And that's for sale to a club in a city or a venue in a city and people come for that. So th those are our customers in a way. And I really uh, uh, am supremely grateful uh, to them for coming to see us play. Sure. It's amazing. That's what it's all about. So I know the band, we're, it's getting close to sound check time, so you'll probably hear the PA pretty soon. So we'll, we'll move on here. Um, how about some, quickly if you want to, some personal relationships. Did music and your commitment, your drive to do what you do in the bands and tour and all that kind of stuff ever, uh, was it ever hard on your personal relationships outside of music? And is there any way, can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah. How to navigate some of those waters? Well, I didn't get married till much later in life because I wanted to be established uh, financially and, and, and I didn't really have time to start a family, so I don't have any kids. Right. Uh, uh, I would have liked to have had that, but that's a sacrifice I had to make. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, and uh, therefore, people people I know that have kids, I always I always take care of them as best I can because <laughs> they're they're creating the future with their children, and sure. I appreciate that. Uh, so I did get married till later in life, but I got lucky because I found just an amazing, wonderful uh, woman, my wife Elizabeth. So we're we're very happy. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, in the early days, it was a a, a lonely, <laughs> a one man road, you know, to to get to it. So. Uh, Making personal sacrifices is sometimes the name of the game in almost any business. Sure. You know, you have to, you know, you're going to have to, if you're running a restaurant, you can't afford a cleaner yet. You're going to stay after and clean the whole place and get up early in the morning to open it and uh, until you get to a point where you're financially in better shape to hire some help. So, uh, uh, and plus you're traveling a lot now and I can't really stay in touch. Plus, initially, I was in Buffalo, New York. He moved to L.A. It was hard to keep friends in both, so I, so I lost touch with a lot of people back in Buffalo mm. and was in L.A. for 32 years. Now I've left L.A. To Na for Nashville. All pretty much musical decisions, too, Okay. more than anything else. Uh, I just need to be near an airport. L.A. is difficult, so in Nashville, we're, we're 15 minutes from the airport. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's an easier city for me to tour from. Sure. All the bus companies are there and everything in Nashville. Right. So uh, now a, a lot of my friends in LA I'm losing touch with, uh, sadly. I try my best and social media helps. But uh, yeah, there's a, 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 a lot of great friends that I've had through the years that, I'm, uh, that, I, that I miss, that I don't have the time to spend with now that I wish I did. So there's, there's always gonna be sacrifices. But in the end, uh, we, we, you know, we both have a great circle of friends, many in common. It's great people. Uh, there's kind of a, uh, a, a factor that weeds out the bad guys as time goes on sure. from, uh, from the music biz. Right. You know what I mean? And uh, there's still a few clunkers in there, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> mostly people, people kind of separate themselves out from people that are troubling. So now I'm lucky to have uh, just great people that are, are my, my friends and co-musicians. Sure. I, you know, I only met you about two years ago, and uh, we've had a, I've had a wonderful time playing with you and your, your beautiful wife, and uh, uh, just getting to know some of your friends as well. So it is a great, great community, and it'll help out in a situation where you might have to make some personal uh, sacrifices because there are great, great people. 
the drummer uh, that you uh, are replacing, Pat Torpy, was my closest musical friend. Wonderful man, incredible a husband to his wife, incredible father to his dad, not unlike yourself, of course, and a great player and singer like yourself as well. And uh, he was a very important person to me, and I realized more than ever in his passing how valuable some people are in my life. Sure. You know, so uh, it's, it's a... It's a great business, and there's, a, there's great, great people in it, and uh, generous, uh, uh, friendly, helpful, <laughs> talented people. And, uh, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to have uh, the friends I have now. Awesome. Billy, thank you so much. My pleasure, Nick. This has been a blast. I really, I mean, the whole U.S. run. I'm so excited I'm, get, I'm able to do this oh, with you guys. Oh, we are. It's exciting. The new record we made, I think, is going to be really cool. There's lots of great songs on there, too. So this is an exciting time for me. So I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me about your career and some advice for the younger folks out there in the great. audience watching. And just have a great gig tonight. Thank you. And I may add, uh, it's a joy. I'm saying this in front of the camera, but I say this off camera, too. It's a joy to work with you. Thank you, man. And your plan is just the finesse and uh, righteous, amazing, right lick and right move at the right time. You've got a great instinct for that, and your voice is great. And uh, we couldn't have done this tour without you, so oh, we man. really have you to thank for this. Thank you, brother. Appreciate right it. On. You got it, man. Thanks, bro. Now, that was pretty great, wasn't it? I hope you do agree. You know, every time I get a chance to sit down and talk to Billy, I learn something from the guy because he's been around for a long time. And you know that saying, been there, done that, right? You've heard that before. Well, he has been there and done that many, many times over in the music business. He's one of the most dedicated musicians I have ever met. And he really does know what it takes and what it means to be a musician. Now, with that being said, I hope you join me back here in a couple of weeks for episode number three, and then a couple of weeks after that for episode number four, and so on and so on down the line. Got so many great artists lined up for this podcast. Again, if you're watching and listening on YouTube, subscribe to the channel and thank you. If you're listening to the podcast on the streaming service, thank you for that too. Make sure you follow the podcast, and I'll see you again next time on the next episode of So You Want to Be a Musician. Cheers, everybody.